Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. It's an iconic image symbolizing the sum of mankind's deepest fears. The specter of an enormous rocky body impacting our planet. In popular fiction, including best-selling books and blockbuster movies, the notion of a planet destroying asteroid on a trajectory to Earth's orbit is routinely presented as not just possible, but ultimately inevitable. Planetary scientists have told us for many decades that a giant meteoritic impact caused the extinction of the dinosaurs and should be regarded, along with anthropogenic global warming, as the greatest threat to the futurity of our planet and species. In fact, in recent months, Numerous science headlines have emphasized the urgency with which many scientists perceive this threat. June 30th of this year marked the annual celebration of Asteroid Day, and science websites mark the occasion by arguing the need for greater funding for planetary defense. It appears that this posture has greatly impacted public opinion. According to a recent poll by the Associated Press and the NORC Center for Public Affairs Research, Americans now say that the number one priority for the U.S. space program should be defense against asteroids, comets, and meteors. However, behind the perceived threat that asteroids and other cosmic intruders pose are numerous beliefs that have remained unchallenged since even prior to the space age. The notion of an enormous rock slamming into our planet is indeed very frightening. After all, the surfaces of rocky planets and moons in our solar system are absolutely riddled with craters, which, according to mainstream science, are the result of countless kinetic impacts over eons of time. However, as we will see, for decades, science discovery has demanded an entirely new way of seeing so-called impact craters, as well as the origin and nature of comets, asteroids, and meteoroids, and the history and future of our own planet. Let us consider first what we should actually expect if an object such as an asteroid or comet closely encounters a planet. On only two occasions in modern times, scientists have had the opportunity to anticipate such an event. In 1994, when the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 approached the planet Jupiter. And again in 2014, when the comet sighting spring approached Mars. In both instances, the actual observed interactions between the comet and planet were so unexpected, they should have forced a reassessment of the very foundations of comet theory. Prior to Shoemaker-Levy 9's encounter with Jupiter, some astronomers predicted that the fragments of the comet were too small to have any significant effect when they hit the gas giant planet. The comet's co-discoverer, the late Eugene Shoemaker, stated, there's a chance we will see very little. Likewise, the renowned astronomer Brian Marsden stated, It's going to be tough to see much. I don't think there's going to be a very large explosion. But as we have repeatedly outlined on this series, the comet's apparent electromagnetic influence on the Jovian environment was vastly more dramatic than standard theory can ever explain. The anomalies included unusual and energetic auroral activity immediately after the, quote, impact of the largest comet fragment as well as the disruption and amazing brightening of radiation belts and unexpected X-ray emissions. As Michael Klein of JPL stated in an analysis of the event, never in 23 years of Jupiter observations have we seen such a rapid and intense increase in radio emission. Extra electrons were supplied by a source, which is a mystery. In contrast, what planetary scientists had actually expected was that dust debris from the comet would cause the radiation belts to dim. Satellites tracking the comet fragments unveiled yet another mystery. Some so-called collisions that were projected to occur just beyond Jupiter's limb, which should have been invisible to all but the Galileo spacecraft, were seen by telescopes on our own planet. As NASA's Dr. Andrew Ingersoll stated at the time, in effect, we are apparently seeing something we didn't think we had any right to see. In other words, the electric comet theory would predict dramatic discharge activity high in Jupiter's ionosphere, prior to the comet fragment striking the upper atmosphere. And this is exactly what was observed. The electrical nature of the event was confirmed by the 3,000-kilometer-high vertical jets seen above Jupiter's clouds, 
which then fell back to the planet to form these mysterious crescent-shaped dark features. Simply put, the error is to view both the planet Jupiter and approaching comet fragments as electrically inert. The electrical nature of the event is at least partly affirmed by the data from NASA's Juno mission to the gas giant, including the discovery of electrical potentials in the millions of electron volts which drive Jupiter's aurora, and a vastly more powerful magnetosphere than standard theory had ever imagined. The electric universe theory has always stated that most comet activity comes from the comet, which acquires a quote negative charge with respect to its environment in its outer reaches of the solar system, discharging electrically as it enters a more positively charged domain. In the case of Shoemaker-Levy 9, when it encountered the incredible magnetosphere of the planet Jupiter, the discharges were unusually catastrophic. Similar lessons can be gleaned from comet sighting springs encountered at Mars. NASA's MAVEN spacecraft measured the effects of the comet on the Martian atmosphere. According to a NASA report, quote, debris from the comet added a temporary and very strong layer of ions to the ionosphere, the electrically charged layer high above Mars. MAVEN team member Jared Espley said of the comet's stunning influence, we think the encounter blew away part of Mars's upper atmosphere, much like a strong solar storm would. The main action took place during the comet's closest approach, but the planet's magnetosphere began to feel some effects as soon as it entered the outer edge of the comet's coma. In fact, the Electric Universe prediction of a negatively charged comet dust tail was recently confirmed. In late 2018, scientists studying the quote, weird striations in the dust tail of comet McNaught were amazed to conclude that the dust is quote, electrically charged and its motion is dramatically affected by the solar wind. Of course, even though some asteroids have occasionally, and to the complete surprise of space scientists, produced cometary displays, including collimated jets, they are not typically nearly as electrically dynamic as comets. Nor does our own planet have nearly the electromagnetic energies seen at a gas giant such as Jupiter. Yet in our electric universe, any intruding body that enters our planet's atmosphere from far away will be differently charged and can thus discharge electrically. Testimony to this fact can be seen in the dramatic flaring and explosion of a meteor. In fact, in recent years, mainstream science has begun to recognize the electromagnetic phenomena intrinsic to meteoritic displays. This includes the unusual radiophonic noise that eyewitnesses have reported for many centuries in association with meteor sightings. While mainstream science still imagines that a meteor's bright glare, flaring and disintegration is the result of chemical ablation and atmospheric pressure and heating, abundant evidence suggests these phenomena also involve electrical discharge activity. As argued in a 2005 Thunderbolts article by Michael Armstrong and Jim Payet on the famous Peekskill meteor, one proposed explanation with which the electric universe would agree is that meteors trigger the formation of instabilities in plasma layers. The energy of the flickering and flaring, as well as of the low frequency radiation comes more from the ionospheric plasma than from the meteoroid. The meteors that we've come to think of as quote, burning up in the atmosphere may instead be the targets of mini thunderbolts from the ionosphere. In fact, this viewpoint finds support in the most renowned meteor explosion in modern times. In 1908, in a remote region of central Siberia, a blue-white fireball which some described as brighter than the sun exploded with the force of a 10 to 15 megaton hydrogen bomb. The explosion felled some 60 million trees across an area of 2,000 square kilometers. Yet some trees near the blast center were not burnt, and a ring of burnt trees circling the epicenter was left standing. The thunderous sounds were accompanied by a shock wave that knocked people off their feet and broke windows hundreds of kilometers away. The explosion registered on seismic stations across Europe and Asia. And as far away as Britain, meteorologists registered fluctuations in atmospheric pressure. The resulting pulse of air pressure circled the Earth twice. And astronomers observed for several nights afterwards a glowing red haze in the upper atmosphere, though they were not aware of the cause at the time. Curiously, as noted in the Australian Journal of Astronomy in 1993, the Sir Douglas Mawson expedition in Antarctica reported an extensive auroral display a few hours before the Tunguska event. 
Many historical accounts also exist of strange weather, including lightning and thunder, and even seismic activity well before the devastating explosion. Despite occasional claims to the contrary, no impact crater for the intruding body has ever been found, nor the remains of an impactor, though some have occasionally claimed to have discovered Tunguska meteorite fragments. Nevertheless, Tunguska remains officially classified as the largest impact event ever recorded on Earth. In our electric universe, the energy released from an intruding comet, asteroid, or meteor is not limited by its mass and kinetic energy but also the electrical energy due to its charge differential with Earth. This viewpoint also finds support in the largest meteor explosion to have happened on Earth since Tunguska, in 2013 in Russia. Initial estimates coming from the Russian Academy of Sciences stated that the space rock weighed only about 10 tons. However, based on infrasound data from as far away as Greenland and Africa, the rock's estimated size increased by about 1,000 times. In other words, the actual energies produced in the event were exponentially higher than the visual evidence would have suggested. Although the explosion shattered windows and produced other structural damage, and many hundreds of human beings were injured, not a single person was killed in the event. From the Electric Universe perspective, intruding comets and asteroids do indeed pose a threat to human life but the havoc these bodies might wreak will likely be limited to localized disasters. Perhaps a series of Tunguska-like events producing regional devastation with falls of sand and dust. Perhaps electrical craters, fires and earthquakes, but not necessarily any single impact crater at all. Indeed, we cannot overemphasize the need for planetary scientists to completely reassess the theory of planetary cratering. The craters we see on planetary surfaces routinely defy impact theory. Instead, we see unique forms that have been reproduced in decades of laboratory experiments with electrical discharge, including crater chains, weird hexagonal craters, craters with concentric circles, impossibly huge craters, aligned craters, and so-called bullseye craters. The massively cratered surfaces we see on rocky bodies like the Moon, Mercury, and the dwarf planet Ceres were not the result of periodic impacts over eons of time. We have proposed they were the result of interplanetary electrical discharges in a relatively recent epoch of planetary instability. Ironically, it was these catastrophic events recorded in prehistory which embedded in human consciousness the fear of doomsday's inevitable reoccurrence. But in our electric universe, the utterly hopeless projections of standard cosmology, from our sun's nuclear fuel extinguishing and the sun collapsing, to the ultimate fate of the universe ending in a big freeze or heat death, to a giant space rock smashing into our planet and obliterating human life, are not only not inevitable, they have little to no scientific foundation at all. In our electric universe, doomsday is a traumatic memory in need of healing and the future of mankind, planet Earth, and indeed the entire universe remains unwritten.